I'm Maddie Orton for Metro Focus. While classical music compositions have been preserved for our listening pleasure, it's rare to hear pieces played as they would have been over a century ago. That's because instruments have evolved quite a bit in that time. But one New York City orchestra is putting a bit of the past in its performances with antique instruments and techniques. Check them out. Three, four. When Brahms wrote this rhapsody in 1839, he wrote it for the instruments of the time, wooden flutes, gut-string violins, and valveless French horns. And at a concert by the American Classical Orchestra based out of New York City, those are the instruments on which the audiences of today will hear the piece performed. Musical director Tom Crawford founded the organization over 30 years ago. The group focuses on music from around the 1770s to the 1830s, the post-Baroque classical period, think Beethoven and Mozart. The American Classical Orchestra is one of several music groups like it that fall into the historically informed performance movement, dedicated to presenting period music as it was originally intended to be played centuries ago. A while back, I mean, a good 50 years ago or more, especially in Europe, people realized that, well, wait a minute, um, if the flute was made of wood, you know, if the oboe had fewer keys, if it was a, di a different instrument with the same name, you know, uh, back when Mozart was writing, what are those differences and how would they work if we put them together? Crawford says when the movement first took off, curious musicians who couldn't get their hands on original instruments turned to instrument makers who created exact copies of classical instruments being housed in museums. That meant musical groups like Crawford's were able to get their first taste of authentic classical music. At least speaking for myself and I know many other musicians, we were just astonished at the uh, texture. The texture changed profoundly. This is a huge thing for a musician because the, the natural blend of period instruments is, for me and many others, the greatest asset of all. That blend on classical instruments to which Crawford refers can be challenging to get on modern instruments, which are created to be louder and brighter sounding. As they evolved over the last few centuries, string instruments were reinforced inside to allow musicians to play louder in large concert halls. Wooden flutes gave way to metal ones, partially for the same purpose. When Crawford started his orchestra, musicians were increasingly interested in the precursors to their instruments, but many did not know how to play them. Principal oboist Mark Schachman picked up the Baroque oboe for another ensemble in the early 1970s after graduating from Juilliard. It felt like absolutely uh, impossible. I, we all thought, how the hell are we going to ever be able to do this? It was a challenge. The modern oboe has about 20 keys. The Baroque oboe has three. At this rehearsal, Schachman is playing on his classical one. It's more evolved than his Baroque oboe, but still quite different than a modern version of the instrument. In Mozart's time, you can see that a few keys were added. Uh, not a lot, but a few. The biggest changes were actually in, in, internal, uh, in the question of the bore. And so this was, became a narrower bore, some keys were added, and so it becomes more appropriate for Mozart, where he, or Beethoven, where he likes the higher register of the oboe as opposed to the lower register of the oboe. Schachman says it took years for him to master his period oboes, but now he plays them better than a modern one. In fact, he decided to sell his modern oboe altogether. R.J. Kelly is similarly enchanted with his 19th century corps d'orchestre, a precursor to the French horn made in Paris and bought on eBay. He prefers to play pieces of the period on this instrument because he feels there's nuance in the music that's lost on a modern one. When you see a modern French horn, you'll see their hand in the bell. It doesn't really do much now, but it's a legacy of the technique for this instrument because for every one of those open notes, if I close my hand a bit, I get a second note with a slightly different sound. When you know what the composer's intent is, when you look at a note and you know if it's open or closed, changes the color, changes the dynamic content, may alter the articulation. 
And so all of these things inform your interpretation and I like to think that it gives us a better idea of what the composer had in mind. Whether that's the direction you want to go in or not is a separate issue altogether. According to founder Crawford, an increasing number of musicians and music lovers do want to go in that direction. He thinks the interest in period music played on period instruments comes from a belief in the literature, the music as written, and a realization that the experience is engaging for audiences and musicians alike. The depth of the players and uh, it, the period instrument movement has now, is now permanent. And it's wonderful. For more information on the American Classical Orchestra, visit metrofocus.org.